The Chargers desperately need depth, and after this Keenan Allen trade to the Bears, we have more draft picks to play with. We got an extra fourth round pick, hey, but we have a huge need at wide receiver now, even more than when we had Keenan Allen, because it was still a need with Keenan. So today, I'm going to be doing a full seven round mock draft with all of our picks, and I'm going to be doing what I would do, but I'm also going to be telling you what I think Joe Hortiz and Jim Harbaugh would do at each pick. So make sure to like and subscribe if you do enjoy this content, bro. It helps me out so much. And now, Let's get into this first round because whatever we do with this fifth overall pick is basically going to determine how the rest of this draft plays out. Two of the most obvious scenarios right now is number one, you stay at five and you pick a wide receiver. And then number two, you trade down and get more draft assets. The only team I think right now that could potentially trade up with the Chargers is the Minnesota Vikings. We saw that trade from, uh, I think it was yesterday or two days ago where they got that 23rd overall pick. They now have 11 and 23. Would they trade that for the fifth overall pick or are they trying to get into the top three, maybe even top two to target one of those other quarterbacks like Drake May? For the sake of this video, I am going to be sticking at five and making the pick, but I will be making another video talking about everything that could potentially happen with that Vikings trade. And we are gonna be using PFF Mock Draft Sim. This is my favorite mock draft simulator. Here are the sliders that we're going with. And now let's get into the draft. This first few picks should play out exactly how I imagine. Okay, it actually doesn't because Jaden Daniels went number two and Drake May went three, but it does not affect our pick because I think with the wide receiver depth the way it is now, Keenan Allen is gone. It pressures us into taking a wide receiver at this spot. So Malik Neighbors is the main guy I'm looking at. I like him over Romo Dunze, and I think the Chargers, they would probably like Malik Neighbors over Romo Dunze as well. Joe Alt is very tempting here. In a trade down situation, you would look at a guy like Brock Bowers, but then you would also be looking at a guy like Quinion Mitchell. He's a very good scheme, uh, scheme fit for the Chargers on the outside, as well as a guy like Terry and Arnold. And then Fashanu might even be in play for the offensive lineman if we do trade down, but we're sticking at this pick. And the only two options realistically are Joe Alt and Malik Neighbors. And I think, like I said, we need to address wide receiver and Joe Alt. He would really be coming in and playing like right guard for us. Do we want to draft a right guard at the fifth overall selection when it's not as pressing of a need as wide receiver? I don't think so. I'm taking the wide receiver. I think Malik Neighbors is more of a generational talent than Joe Alt anyways. And he's probably going to be more of a difference maker. And now I'm looking at all of these offensive linemen coming off the board. Tyler Guyton, I just saw went. Chop Robinson would be an edge player that I'd be looking at. Well, even actually now, because we have Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack on this team, I'm probably not looking at edge this early anymore. So scratch that. There goes another wide receiver, but we don't need it. Ennis Rakestraw just went three picks before us to the New England Patriots. And if we go up here, part of the reason why the Chargers might be tempted to draft an offensive lineman early is because... Look at the run on offensive linemen. Talize Fuaga would be an awesome fit for us at right tackle from Oregon State. Quinion Mitchell is gone. I would have considered him on the outside to play corner. JC Latham, Troy Fatano, and Amarius Mims are two guys that I think the Chargers are probably falling in love with at the offensive line position. You really should keep an eye on these two guys. But even like Tyler Guyton, he's more of a potential player. He is gone. Jackson Powers Johnson, I would have loved to take him in the second round, but now here we are. We do have our wide receiver, so we don't need to be looking at that. Adonai Mitchell just went before us as, as well as Keon Coleman. So the wide receiver depth at this point is definitely not as good as probably the offensive line depth because I'm looking at a guy right here in Zach Frazier, the center from West Virginia. He's got a lot of potential. He's one of the best interior offensive linemen in this class. And he is still there in my second round selection here. I think I may want to go for a trench pick. And I think that's what Jim Harbaugh would do. 
because I think with that first overall pick or with the, fir the first round pick, Jim Harbaugh probably is going to take a wide receiver because we've seen him take wide receivers in the past. We've seen the Ravens and the 49ers take wide receivers very highly before, even more so than offensive linemen. But I'm also looking at a guy like TJ Tampa. Kamari Lassiter is another really good scheme fit. Renardo Green, I'm not uh, ruling him out. Max Melton, I like him a lot, not in the second round, but it's coming down to me between TJ Tampa and Zach Frazier. And I think the better scheme fit is TJ Tampa along the outside because we really have like no perimeter depth right now. That's why we drafted wide receiver in the first round. And I think TJ Tampa in the second round might be the way to go. I probably would have taken TJ Tampa at this spot over Ennis Rakestraw Jr. anyways from Missouri. I think TJ Tampa has the size that you want on the outside and he would be a great fit in Jesse Minter's defense. I think the Chargers would opt to go for TJ over Zach Frazier, and I am going to do that as well. TJ Tampa, welcome to the team. And if you look right here, right after us, the Titans took Kamari Lassiter. So if this happens in real life, those guys would be compared by Chargers fans throughout their entire career. Looks like oh, Jatavion Sanders went. That would have been a tight end that I would have considered. I just saw Mike Sanders still went as well. But here we are now in the third round. And now, oh, Junior Colson went two picks before us. Oh, man. I definitely would have taken Junior Colson. But now I'm looking at beefing up the interior. Tavondre Sweat would be an awesome pick right here. He's got so much size. The size that you want along the interior offensive line. We just got Puna Ford uh, in free agency. And now we are looking at adding another defensive lineman that has that size. This dude is like three freaking 50 or 360 pounds. So I already got those two perimeter players with, so I'm not looking at Max Melton, even though this would be an awesome spot to take him if I did not already take a corner. I'm looking also at the interior offensive line. Jeremiah Trotter is a very athletic linebacker from Clemson. He would be a nice fit as well. I cannot believe Renardo Green is still here. That would be an awesome value pick. Cedric Van Pran, and Mason McCormick are the two guys that I'm looking at a lot right now, along with Tavondre Sweat. So really, it's just, is it more of a pressing need along the defensive interior or the offensive interior? And I think getting a center like Cedric Van Pran, who is an, an extremely high football IQ guy that can call out what the defense is doing pre-snap and change the coverage based off of what he sees from the defense, I think Justin Herbert would really, really benefit from a center like that. And Cedric Van Pran, I think he interviews really well at the Combine. I think he probably interviewed really well at the Georgia Pro Day as well. And I know the Chargers must have talked to him. He probably impressed them. And I think I would take this guy here and I, the Chargers probably would as well in the third round. And now we have finally beefed up this offensive line, man. We got our center of the future. We have our cornerback one of the future with TJ Tampa. And we also have hopefully a generational talent at wide receiver with Malik Neighbors. That is what we have gotten with our first three rounds thus far. Okay, now we're in the fourth round and this is where we're looking for depth. So the positions that we need depth, I think are tight end, running back. We still need interior offensive line. I wouldn't rule out corner at this position as well. Interior defensive line, and then also linebacker. So let's see what we have here. Trey Benson is at the top of the board right now. He may be at the top of my board too. I think Marshawn Lloyd, he's got that connection to the Chargers running backs coach now, and he can give you a lot of that, <clears throat> that little shiftiness that we need in the backfield. Change of pace guy. He can catch the ball out of the backfield as well very interested in him and i think the chargers might choose him over a guy like braylon allen especially because now we have gus edwards braylon allen basically does what gus edwards does so i think that's a bit redundant to have in the backfield at this point isaac I, isaac Gurendo, i think that's how you pronounce it he tested extremely well at the combine like he had like a, a top five ras score which means he was one of the top five best athletes at running back in the uh combine for the past like decade this guy's an extreme athlete i'm going a bit too far down here uh theo johnson i would consider and i think at this spot, Cade Stover is a guy I really like. He can run block. And I think it's really between Marshawn Lloyd or Cade Stover for me. The Chargers, they use a lot of tight ends, but we're going to be using a lot of running backs as well. And I think, you know, with this trade now, we have pick 110. We could possibly get both of these guys 
And I'm just going to say we draft the running back first and Marshawn Lloyd because the connection is there. I think the Chargers would like him on this team. Cade Stover went one pick before us to the Falcons. Okay, so now I'm going to look at the other tight ends. We still have Ben Sinat here, Theo Johnson as well. AJ Barner from Michigan, Tip Ryman. Who is the best run blocker? That is what I'm concerned with. And I think the best run blocker may be Theo Johnson out of Penn State. He's got the size. He's 6'6", 260. He's got the arm length so he can block those players out on the edge. But also, he's not a great athlete. He's not going to go out there and get some contested catches. And he's not a really great lateral mover. But with our tight ends, we're just going to be needing run blockers. And I think Theo Johnson here is probably the best fit. And that is who the Chargers would take in this scenario. It's probably who I'm taking too. He's at the top of my board. I'm taking Theo Johnson. And now we have a tight end, a running back, a wide receiver, a corner, and a center. So this draft is going really, really well so far. Okay, now we're in the fifth round and I'm looking at double dip territory at positions. Uh, no one really went before me that I was considering, but the guys I'm looking at, these two LSU defensive linemen, we do need beef along the D line. I also do like McKinley Jackson, but Mason Smith is probably the guy that I would go for. If I do take a D lineman, he's got huge, huge size. This is a guy who's like another really, really big defensive lineman, kind of like Tavondre Sweat, but he did, he does need to develop more in my opinion. And I wouldn't really want to throw him out there because we would need to do that. But okay, but now I'm seeing Zach Zinter. Zach Zinter, he's a guard, obviously from Michigan with that Jim Harbaugh connection. This dude has a lot of size too. He's 6'6", six, six, I think 310 pounds. He is a very good run blocker. And in pass protection, I don't think he allowed a single QB hit last year. Let me just look up the stat. Yeah, he's allowed five hurries last year. No sacks, no QB hits on 296 pass blocking snaps. So he can pass block. And we are double dipping now into interior offensive line. We just, we just got Cedric Van Pran. And now we're getting Zach Zinter. Hopefully these guys are going to be the center and right guard of the future. This is who I'm taking, by the way. And with the addition of Zach Zinter, now we have two interior offensive linemen of the future. When that position, we, we've seen in free agency now, those guys are getting a ton of money. So we have good roster management while also protecting our best asset right now in Justin Herbert. Okay, now we're in the sixth round. I really, really need to get some defensive depth. So I'm looking at interior defensive linemen as well as the linebackers. And there's really like slim pickings, Steel Chambers, not a huge fan of him. Ooh, Jalen Ford, he's a very good run defender, but we do kind of need pass coverage with our linebackers now. I mean, we already went through that Kenneth Murray phase. Uh, I think actually Darius Muasau, he's from UCLA. He was the leader of that defense last year. He's a pretty good coverage linebacker. That's like what he's best at. He can also rush the passer. So this this is actually a pretty good uh, fit for Jesse Minter now that I'm thinking about it. He's not great in run defense, but it's not like he's going to be a detriment in run defense. Uh, so I think I might take Darius Muasau here. He would help in special teams as well. This is linebacker depth, and hopefully he could come in and be a starter of a sixth round pick. Hopefully coming in and being a starter at linebacker now, man. We just have so many holes that we need to fill. And... <laughs> pause okay now with our first seventh round pick i do want to still add some beef to this team so i'm looking at interior defensive linemen and we really i mean keith randolph from illinois he has the size he i mean he has shown some uh, potential in pass rush but again you know there's a reason why he's here in the seventh round he's pretty inconsistent and he's not great sometimes he gets blown off the ball trey taylor is another guy i'm looking at but he's I think he's like six foot 210 and he doesn't really give you anything else that Alohi Gilman or Derwin James wouldn't. And he did play at Air Force. The competition there wasn't that great, but he does have a good run defense grade and a good um, coverage grade. I do just think like we need interior defensive line depth so bad. And the size is definitely something that works in Keith Randolph's favor from Illinois. I think I'm taking Keith Randolph and that is a Jim Harbaugh move if I've ever seen one. Okay, so with our last pick, it's looking like it's probably going to be a double dip on linebacker Jordan McGee from Temple. I mean, this isn't a guy who's got a ton of athleticism or a really good size, but he's got a high football IQ. He's, so, he's shown some pretty good, uh, I think his stats are actually good. Yeah, look at this pass rush grade is 90. Run defense is really good. Coverage grade is really good actually, but that missed tackle rate, 
not great. And he only had that one year of solid production in 2023. I haven't seen as much film on him as I would like to in order to draft him. But with that special teams ability, hopefully, because he's got that football IQ, I think this is a high character guy. That's what the reports are coming out of the combine. And that is exactly what we want later on in the draft. You want to send those flyers on guys like that because there's not going to be a perfect prospect later on. Not even in the first round, there's a perfect prospect. And here is our official seven round post Keenan Allen mock draft. We fixed the wide receiver room with Malik Neighbors. We still have Quentin Johnston. I'm not giving up hope on him, man. And then TJ Tampa along the outside is going to help us a lot. Hopefully in free agency, we add to that position as well. Cedric Van Pran is going to come in and start for us along or in that center position immediately. Marshawn Lloyd is going to get snaps immediately as well in that backfield by committee. Leo Johnson is also going to come in. He's going to compete to be tight end one, but he's going to see the field a lot because we're going to have a lot of two and three tight end sets. And then Zach Zinter going to come in and compete at that right guard spot with Jamari Sawyer and whoever else comes in in free agency as a depth signing from here on out. Darius Muasel, leader of that defense in UCLA, like I said, and he's going to come in, be a special teams player. Also probably come in and compete for playing time at linebacker. Keith Randolph, depth piece along the interior, huge size. Jordan McGee, another special teams player that I'm taking a flyer on because of his football IQ. I think he could be a Harbaugh dude. And also I am still giving away the PS5 Spider-Man 2 edition. All you have to do is click on the sign up link in the description to create your underdog account using my promo code McLean, that is M-A-C-L-A-N-E, and deposit at least $10, but you will get up to $100 if you deposit that matched back to you. You don't need to spend any money if you don't need to, don't need to make any plays, but you do need to deposit at least $10 in order for me to see you on my end and enter you into the PS5 giveaway. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you didn't see my video yesterday, here is everything you need to know about the Keenan Allen trade because I think there's more to it than a lot of people are saying.